So as a tennis coach, believe it or not, I'm actually not nearly as interested in how well my players are doing when they're playing well, when they're quote unquote on, when they're at their best. Now, of course, it's a nice bonus. It's a nice bonus when you're playing as well. It, it's satisfying, it makes you feel good, it makes you look good. But really what I'm more interested in is how good my players are when they're bad. And what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that tennis, just like life, has so many different challenges it presents. It's got all kinds of struggles. They're numerous. It could be you're not playing that well that day. Maybe you don't think you're playing that well that day. Maybe the conditions aren't right for you. It's dark. You can't see the ball. It's windy. Uh, your opponent cheated you. Maybe your boyfriend dumped you that day. Maybe your girlfriend dumped you that day. Your stomach hurts. The list goes on and on. I think you guys are getting what I'm talking about here. That's adversity in tennis. And for me, the defining mark of a great player and what I'm really interested in as a tennis player is how good they are when they're bad. How do they deal with these moments in tennis? Because they are inevitable. And so the best players in the world, the greats, whether it's a Serena Williams, uh, Djokovic, Nadal, Federer, these players are incredibly good at being sufficient and being able to solve problems when they're not at their best, when they're not playing well, when they're not feeling well. Uh, they're remarkable at digging in and finding solutions. Let's just take Novak, jo Novak Djokovic, for example. 2011, he had one of the best years in the history of tennis. I think he started the year maybe 41-0 and 0 or something like that. He lost just a few matches all year. He was a 9 or 10-1 and 1 against Nadal and Federer, just the guy was barely losing games. He was un unstoppable. And I don't know Djokovic personally, but I would dare to say that he probably wasn't feeling unbelievable or at his best every one of those matches he won. There's probably moments where he was feeling maybe some personal struggles, maybe some, some things going on. Perhaps uh, his body wasn't feeling that good that day. Adversity in tennis, how do we deal with it? I like to recommend three, three steps that I can point out to you guys that I think could guide you when you're, when you're dealing with struggles on the court. And I just want to outline them really quickly. So the first one is choice and the power of choice. So you might not be able to control all the, all the factors that are going on. You can't control the stimulus, let's say, whatever the struggle is, but you can control how you react to it. You have a choice. And so I advise you to make a choice to, to face it head on and to take a positive attitude. So first step is choice. Next step, will. Will, grit, determination. You've got to be willing and have the desire to get yourself out. When you're up against a challenge, I can tell you all the necessary steps or what they might be, but ultimately, ultimately it's going to come down to you. It's going to come down to if you want to dig yourself out. You've got to have grit. You've got to have desire to improve your circumstance. There's just no room for self-pity in tennis and really as far as I know in life. So willingness to, to steer yourself out. And the third step, and I think this is actually the most difficult, difficult one, but also the most rewarding is challenge. What I present here is seeing the adversity, seeing the moment as a challenge. So it's the mindset of accepting where you are, seeing the situation as is, and looking, that as a, looking at it as an obstacle or a hurdle that you're willing to take head on. So that's seeing adversity as a challenge. And um, again, if we go back to these aforementioned great players, they're able to dig in in those moments, and they're able to look at the challenge presented and find solutions. So um, that's, those are the three steps. And along with that, I just want to also <coughs> point out that when you're looking at it as a challenge and you've made that decision, make sure that you focus on being good enough that day. So if I'm using an example of, let's just say, Rafael Nadal, he's great, or a lot of these players are great at whatever the day is when they're struggling, they're able to deal with what they're given that day. And I know a lot of us players, when we're struggling, we tend to take ourselves out of the moment and we tend to try to force what's going on. And if something's not working, we try and try and try again. And maybe we think of a different day where it was working, we try to create that. And I advise you not to try to recreate or relive the past, but rather deal with what you have going and available at that day, on that day at that moment. So again, guys, those are the three steps that I advise when dealing with adversity in the tennis court. We've got choice and the power of choice. We've got will, determination, and grit. 
Then finally, we've got seeing adversity as a challenge. And along with that, embracing the challenge and remembering to be good enough that day and to deal with what you've got that day. And on a final note, just to wrap it up, I really want to stress and emphasize the ties between life and between tennis. Because tennis is almost like a mini picture of life or a microcosm of life. And so the more we're able to practice and deal with facing adversity head on on the tennis court, and we're choosing to take a positive approach to it, the more it's going to translate to how we deal with adversity in our lives. And just like on the tennis court, it's inevitable that as humans, we're going to struggle in our lives. It's just human nature to deal with adversity. So the more we're able to embrace it, the more well-apps we are for handling it on the tennis court, it's going to translate to our lives as well.